I started making candles four years ago and I've learned so much along the way. Today I'll be sharing the answers to the four most common candle making questions. When to use essential oils, when to use fragrance oils, the most common wax types for a strong hot throw, and how to decide which wax is right for you. I also have an in-depth guide that shares exactly how to completely run your business through a success-based candle business template for you to download as well as specific steps to be more intentional about your process. You can use the code YouTube for 30% off. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, and share it with other candle makers in Facebook groups to spread the word. Now let's jump right in. When to use fragrance oils and candles. In this lesson, we will discuss the various reasons why it would make the most sense for you to use fragrance oils and exactly how. Firstly, it is incredibly important to make note of the fact that fragrance oils are highly concentrated and should be used with caution. The amount of fragrance depends on the type and size of your candle. As a general rule of thumb in our candle community, one ounce is suitable for one pound of wax. But if you wanna use a method that will actually get you results, then I recommend using the 10% fragrance load method. This is something that I do to ensure I get a hot throw every single time. So a great example of this would be if you had to make an 11 ounce candle, I would use 10 ounces of wax and one ounce of fragrance. And I use this ratio for every single candle. It has never failed me. That's a secret tip that you can leverage in your candle making process. Secondly, fragrances should only be added at the proper melt point. I've included a link in the description to charts that give you relevant information based upon the top five different types of wax and the proper pouring temperature for each. Use these as a guideline to help you along your journey. Also, be sure to blend your fragrances for at least two minutes. Carefully folding in the fragrance will allow a very high performing candle. Thirdly, it is very important to consider the type of candle fragrance you're using. You wanna make sure your fragrance has a high flash point, so be careful about which fragrances you're purchasing and take heed to the product description. Yes, definitely thoroughly review the product description to uncover if it's candle safe. There are some fragrances that are only body safe. There are some fragrances that are only candle safe and not body safe. You need to be mindful of the difference. Lastly, you need to be mindful of the intent when making your candle. If you're making a candle just for decorative purposes, you may need to involve essential oils instead of fragrance oils. But if this is for someone to use in their home fragrance, then a highly concentrated fragrance oil will make the most sense. And that's it. By following these guidelines, you will ensure your candles are safe and offer the strongest scent. When to use essential oils. Essential oils are commonly used in the candle making community to provide a calming scent that is invigorating, that will captivate your healing demographic. Essential oils are a great addition to your candles. They add more of a therapeutic vibe and offer a solution to any healing properties you're going after. In this lesson, we'll uncover exactly how to use essential oils in candles. Firstly, it is important to note that not all essential oils are safe to use in candles. Some essential oils can actually be flammable, so it's important to do your research and verify within the product description that it is safe to use in candles. Additionally, some essential oils may not have a strong enough hot throw for candles. These are the ones that you want to stay far away from because you will not offer a high quality product for your customer. I've linked some reputable websites to leverage in the description of this lesson so that you can gain access to insight on the best essential oil vendors to choose for candle making. Once you've chosen your oils, it is important to use them with caution and sparingly. Adding too much oil to the wax can cause the candle to burn uneven or excessively. As I mentioned prior, if you want to ensure you get the strongest hot throw every time, I'd recommend my 10% method. A great example of this would be if you had to make an 11 ounce candle, use one ounce of fragrance and 10 ounces of wax. And that's a gold standard for all candles in terms of different types and different fragrances. It is also imperative to ensure you add essential oils at the right time to avoid burning off fragrance too fast. I've inserted charts here of proper recommendations for when you should add essential oils to five of the most commonly used wax. Use these as a guideline in your candle making journey. In conclusion, 
adding essential oils can be a wonderful, useful tool to create a calm, warm, and inviting atmosphere for your customers. However, it is important to note that you will not get the highest and most optimal throw of your candles by leveraging only essential oils. In my opinion, it is a best practice to offer a happy balance between your fragrance oil and your essential oil to make sure your candle has a strong hot throw. Never use essential oils alone if you're intending to use these candles for home fragrance. The most common wax types for a strong hot throw. As you all know, the most important factor to consider in making a stronger scented candle is how it smells when it is lit, hence the title of this masterclass, hot throw. In order to achieve the best possible hot throw, it is imperative to choose the right wax. So where do we start? There are several different types of wax that'll put you in the best position for candle making success. Soy wax is the number one and most popular choice because it's eco-friendly and 100% natural. This wax will help you speak to the environmentally friendly consumer as well as the consumer who wants to avoid the headaches that come from toxic ingredients. How However, because it's all natural, the chemical bonds in soy wax take more heat to break down. It is also important to note that with soy wax, you have to be mindful of the amount of fragrance in a more sensitive manner to ensure the most optimal throw. Soy wax is stiffer, so it often does not allow for an easy manageability when it comes to blending in fragrance, so you will not see that stronger scent that you would with a softer wax. Paraffin wax, on the other hand, is a petroleum-based wax that you'll often see in commercial candles. It has a high melting point, which means it can hold way more fragrance than any other kind of wax. However, it is not as eco-friendly as any other option. In fact, most customers would complain that paraffin wax causes headaches, migraines, and can even affect your lungs due to the strong carcinogens in the type of wax. It is important to use paraffin in moderation and as a best practice, I wouldn't recommend making paraffin only candles. Of the many, many types of wax that you can use, I highly recommend coconut wax. You could get this wax in several different blends, including Cocoa 83, Coconut Apricot Cream, as well as a blend between coconut and soy. Coconut wax is designed to give you a bright white appearance. It provides an excellent fragrance throw and it has excellent container adhesion. When I first began making candles of all of the different wax that I tried, coconut wax was the most user friendly with the strongest hot throw. You can burn your coconut apricot cream wax within less than 72 hours and you'll get a very strong hot throw. This is quite uncommon because soy wax takes at least two weeks as well as paraffin. Ultimately, the type of wax you choose will depend on your personal personal preference. How to choose the right wax for your candle business. The number one factor to consider is the melting point. You should be mindful of the fact that soy wax and paraffin wax have a more challenging melting point level as you have to incorporate the fragrance at a different time then you fully melt the wax. This is important in order to identify whether or not you want to go through the hassle of melting your wax to a certain point and then waiting to add fragrance every time. The second point to consider is fragrance load. There are certain wax that definitely does not allow for a high fragrance load due to the chemical bond. A great example would be soy wax. Soy wax does not allow for a very high fragrance load due to it being such a strong, solid chemical bond. Coconut wax, on the other hand, is very soft and soluble and easier to incorporate fragrance so you can achieve a higher scent throw faster. The third factor to consider is color. You wanna make sure that if you're interested in adding color to your wax, that the type of wax you select can actually handle it. Soy wax, beeswax, and paraffin are great options if you want to add in color. But as it relates to the softer coconut wax, it isn't recommended to add too much color because of the possibility of the color not being able to adhere properly to the wax. 
Finally, cost should be considered when selecting the type of wax for you. Coconut wax is on the more pricey side because of its manageability and the fact that it is still toxin free and good for the environment. Soy wax is more cost effective because of its eco-friendly properties and it's more of a harder bond and a tougher wax to use. I've listed in the description of this video specific comparisons of each wax so that you can make the right choice. By considering these factors, you can create high quality candles that your customers Customers will love. Now let's put your knowledge to the test. Complete the quiz in the description of this video and show me what you got.